Welcome back to the desk, guys. We're about to get underway with game one of Rattlesnake versus First Departure, your debut match for the International 3 Eastern Qualifiers. This one is going to be a doozy. The game is now loading. I have managed to unfuck up that, which I messed up before. And of course, I couldn't have done it without my man, Merlini, on my left. I'm best at blaming you. Yeah. In God's. He's good. It's my job. He, he's just been sitting here, like, laughing at us every time we make a mistake, <laughs> which is pretty much a constant uproar it's, from him. It's an analyst, analyst job. We brought him here for the comedy, and he is certainly delivering so far. Regardless, our first match should be an interesting one, and a good one. First departure for his Rattlesnake coming up in just a second. Not Rising Stars, as Luminous misdirected Can we just some move of you. past that, please? <laughs> <laughs> he's getting a little tilted up. It looks like we should be loading in just about any second. But, I mean, again, to go back to the predictions, I think to break the series down very simply, Rattlesnake is going to take the fight to you. If anyone was watching Invictus Gaming back in the G1 League Season 4, I wouldn't say they run a face rush style. They will pick heroes that scale well late game, so they don't rely entirely on ganks. But it's an aggressive team. They're going to be looking for kills early. They're going to force you to fight. And you have to be prepared with wards, with good map awareness. If you're not, you're going to be in trouble. And with that being said, Merlini, we're finally ready to get inside game one for the International 3 East qualifiers. One team will move on to a guaranteed spot at the LAN finals in Seattle. With that being said, well, we're going to hop inside the game soon, but in the meantime, we'll just think about doing it. And there we go. We're in the game now. We'll have our draft overlay soon. Looking beautiful. I'm just bugging Cal, our producer. He's doing a fantastic job. But, Merlini, draft's now underway. We can talk a little more about it. The teams have had a lot of time to think over the picks, the bands. And we're seeing a lot of standard Asian bands. We're seeing the Lone Druid band very early here that sometimes slips through in the Western scene. Not something First Departure wants to give away to Rattlesnake because, again, Rattlesnake likes to be aggressive, but the backbone of that aggression is being able to push towers after it. And Lone Druid, strong hero that also does that. Yeah, very top-tier hero in uh, the Eastern scene, and no surprise there. Um, so these bands are already getting underway. We see Magnus banned out by Rattlesnake Gaming. And Magnus is one of those heroes that fits very well into a split push strategy because he's one of the best turtles in the game. Sure, you might lose a couple of T1s and maybe a T2, but if you want to break that base, you have to deal with RP. RP is just one of those ridiculous spells that if you hit a big RP, four or five man RP, it can just completely change the game around and is perfect for turtling and for four on five strategies. So Rattlesnake Gaming will ban Magnus out as well as Batrider. Yeah, some interesting bands, just making sure I have all my Dota TV audio set. Okay, should be good to go. And standard Asian bands. There's a Wisp left in the pool. That's sort of the one interesting hero that some of the Chinese teams have been picking. They normally don't first pick it. They won't even pick it in the first stage. But if it sticks around through the second stage of the draft, especially against First Departure, who love to split push, this is a hero that can ruin you. And no surprises here. First Departure goes Shadow Demon first. Kind of a safe standard opening. And Rattlestake are going to snap up the Kabu Clockwork. Yep, we talked about that during our player cards, and Kabu Clockwork, you said you haven't seen him lost a game with it. I haven't seen him lose a game with it. He wins a lot. That's one thing we can say with absolute certainty. And Rattlesnake, they're very unusual with the Clockwork. Oftentimes, it's a four-position support. That's what Kabu's been playing for the team. And they even do things like dual lanes. They've run a Clockwork Darkseer offlane dual lane, and it's surprisingly effective. I think I saw Dignitas try to emulate that style. Didn't work quite as well for them. But if you can make it work, it's scary because these two heroes, as a dual lane, can actually deal with tri lanes pretty damn well. And first departure's first pick is actually Shadow Demon. So uh, Kiro does kind of fall into tier 2 category in the Western scene. I think this hero is just one of the best supports in the game. Just good offensive capabilities, defensive capabilities, doesn't need any items, does a lot of damage, can deal with BKB. He just has it all. And I, I really like that hero. And he just combos well, works well in triple lanes, aggressive strategies. And again, if you want to do a four on five split push strategy, works well into that too. I mean, what else could we see? Rattlesnake, they've gone for the Darkseer Clockwork early. They might look to pick up that carry. Something like a Gyrocopter is a possibility. Some sort of aggressive carry for them. They, the Alchemist was mentioned earlier in the pregame discussion. Sometimes they'll send that solo mid. The clock could even go mid for this team. So it's very hard to predict their lanes. And when you have these heroes, it's already hard. When you're playing against Rattlesnake, it's even harder. Yeah, it's a very flexible lineup. We've seen Clockwork solo mid. We've seen part of a triple lane. We've seen him off lane. He can really do anything. Darkseer can also be in part of a triple lane solo mid, off lane, as well as the jungle. So Rattlesnake Gaming's lineup is very flexible at this point. And we see First Departure pick up a puck. What? So it's hero that's risen in popularity um, ever since the base damage buff and just kind of outshines Quap in every area. A little bit more uh, silence and control during team fights, better escape and better initiate and just 
Ooh, and we see a nature's profit pick up yeah. too. A, a, a hint of split push. Not too much this early, which I like from first departure. I feel if they go for something like the anti-mage in the first phase of the draft, that's where Rattlesnake can really punish them. But you get a puck, you get a shadow demon, strong laning heroes, a puck who can snowball mid and well, we'll see who's going to snowball mid, because Rattlesnake, they have no qualms. They'll go right for the Queen of Pain, which I think you mentioned, and I, I kind of agree. Puck has a bit of a, an advantage in that matchup. Maybe not overwhelming, but with phase shift timing, especially on the Singapore server, first departure should have great pings, could maybe look to kind of win that matchup. But they'll need that Puck to do a lot, because as much as Profit offers more than an anti-mage or other split pushers early, it's still not really a hero that can dominate the laning stage in most cases. Yeah, I think... Uh, Puck's a really good uh, pick versus Lionel because they don't really have any lockdown. They have no silence and only hookshot right now. I mean, a battery assault, but he'll be able to escape from most situations and just be able to dance around their lineup for a little bit. And he controls Queen of Pain quite well, especially if you get an early blink dagger and uh, that eventual scythe of vice that will just continuous, continuously cause problems for that hero. The thing about Puck is and a lot of time it forces Queen of Pain to get a BKB and she can't be that huge force in the mid game without an Orchid Rush or a uh, Scythe of Vice Rush. So the second phase bans are underway. We see Nyx Assassin banned out by first departure. Yeah, Nyx Assassin actually just ignored for, through the first phase. And frankly, it's a hero that's kind of fallen off in popularity, and, and especially in the Asian scene where often you'll see a Lifestealer pick up and then Nyx Assassin really isn't effective against him because of rage. But there's no Nyx in this, uh, or Lifestealer in this game. He was banned, so... I'm interested to see it slips through, but then you look at first departure. This is a split pushing team, right? They're already up against a clockwork. You don't want to have to deal with someone like a Nyx Assassin killing your profit when he's trying to keep the lanes out, killing the puck when he's trying to find kills. So I think strategically, this is a very smart ban for them, especially when you realize that Rattlesnake, they want to find those pickoffs. And banning a Nyx Assassin, well, it's going to limit the potential for them to do it. So we see a Dragon Knight ban. Dragon Knight is a hero that's been picked a little bit. He works well into split push just because of that level 6 ultimate. It's one of the few carries that can just cause severe damage to towers. Him along with Luna I think are the best sort of like carry pushers uh, that serve as both roles. And then we see Keeper of the Light banned out as the fourth man for uh, first departure. He is very good at anti-push and anti-split push with that recall ability, the Illuminate, and especially with no Nyx Assassin in the game to somewhat soft counter his Illuminate. I think it's a good ban by first departure. Yeah, again, they're banning a lot of supports, which tells me that they really expect this Clockwork to be played as a farmer. Again, we don't know that's going to happen. Rattlesnake have run dual lanes with the Clockwork. They've played Kabu in a support role with the Clockwork. So you ban a Nyx, you ban a Kotal, you're expecting a Clockwork to get farm priority this game. Otherwise, why would they need all these supports? They can put the Clockwork into the run of those roles. And they'll end with the Nwist ban. I think this is very well advised. They could fit one more support in for sure, even if they run the Clockwork as one. And this is the one that really scares me. The Nyx and the Wisp, I think, make a lot of sense. Keeper of the Light, I'm not sure if... I, I mean, like you said, it's good against pushing... Uh, or against split push lineups, so I think it makes sense in that sense. I, I just feel like for Rattlesnake, they're going to want to go for more stun-heavy lineups, lineups that can really find kills rather than just slowing down a push. They want to be taking the fight to first departure, and we're about to see just how much they want to do it as this final ban comes and then the second stage of the draft begins. Yeah, the sustainability and mobility that Keeper of Light provides for your team is not to be underestimated, and we're still waiting for the last ban from Rattlesnake Gaming. I think that Nature's Prophet will actually have a pretty tough time this game, especially if he lanes versus the Darks here. I think it's more common to see Clockwork support as opposed to Darkseer support. So if we see the Nature's Prophet versus Darkseer matchup, he's going to have a very tough time, especially with Clockwork being able to pick him off uh, from long range. Clockwork excels at picking off those global split push heroes, most notable notably Nature's Prophet and Tinker. And the last band for Metalsnake Gaming will be the Anti-Mage, and I've seen Miracle play this hero a lot of times. Yeah, you and I, I think, actually cast one of his more ridiculous Anti-Mage games, as well mm -hmm. as maybe a Naga Siren game, where he was sending his illusions in, uh, and he was using his sleep to basically... He would, he would sleep so that the tier 3 tower in the bottom lane wasn't taking damage, but then the tier 4 mid was exposed, and he'd send it with creeps in the base from the middle lane. He'd... He basically sleep the entire enemy team. So Speaking of Naga Siren. Yeah, he's going to go for it now. He's so clever with this hero. What he does, he'll use the sleep to sleep the entire enemy team, but he'll do it far enough away from the tier 3s or tier 4s so that his illusions can backdoor if there's any kind of creep support. So look to Miracle if he has a decent start to be ridiculous in the mid game. It also gives them a str fairly strong laning carry, despite the nerfs to Naga's base damage a few patches ago. She still has Riptide. She still has decent base damage and the net. And it also gives them great lockdown versus Darkseer and Queen of Pain. I really like the pick. Yeah, and 
ban, you can't ban on all the carries. They try banning out three of them with a uh, decent lockdown, maybe split push uh, with DK with a stun and anti mage and gyrocopter with their uh, strong pushing potential. But you can't ban them all. They even have Luna left, and I think there are a couple others left in the pool. But looks like uh, Naga Siren will most likely be going to Miracle, and this will be the hero to watch, as LD was saying. Just phenomenal at stopping team fights in their tracks with just sleep and everybody TPing out and being able to split push with effective use of Song of the Siren. I actually haven't seen this split illusion push that you've been talking about, but I'm excited to see it uh, possibly in action this game. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a good split push, but I, the other thing I like about it is it's a hero that can really punish the Darkseer and the Queen of Pain in lane if they overextend, and Rattlesnake is going to go for a Skywrath Mage, a hero that we've seen Dendi play a lot of for Navi. Some other teams have experimented with as a solo mid situationally. Normally when I see this hero picked up, it's to dominate the middle lane and kind of snowball, and you get it for the silence above all else. And I think that silence is going to be great against the hero like Naga as well as Puck. You prevent Naga from ulting, you prevent Puck from phase shifting or orbing away. This could be a very potent hero, but it could also be a support. And I'm kind of curious to pick your, pick your brain. How do you think this Skyrath Mage might be played, and do you feel it'll be effective in whatever that role is? I think it would be very, very effective in solo mid. I've seen Skyrath Mage uh, solo against most of the very common solo mids, Queen of Pain, Storm, Puck, Magnus, and he just dominates all those heroes. Sure, Puck and face just Arcane Bolts here and there, but once he gets that silence up and running, there's almost nothing you can do. And if you get BKB, you're just going to be useless for most of the game. But again, they have very unpredictable lanes at this point. They could run Skywrath Mage as a support, as LD was talking about. They have Darkseer, Clockwork, Interchangeable in the off lane, And we see a Juggernaut as the last pick, and as well as First Departure picking up a Jakiro to round out their supports. Yeah, so it's going to be a Queen of Pain as well as a Skyrath Mage. Sag is playing that Skyrath Mage, so it feels like a support Skyrath Mage. And I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to lane it. It seems like a support Clockwork, a support Skyrath Mage, and a Juggernaut in a tri lane, which, I mean, I could be wrong about the way they lane it, but that seems a bit awkward to me, Merlini. Before we talk too much about the lanes, though, we should start by introducing our two challengers. On the side of First Departure, on the Radiant side, we have scripted the man of many names playing that support Shakira Miracle known and feared for a split push handling the Naga Siren. Hana on the Nature's Prophet and Lubby going to be taking up the role of the support Shadow Demon. Last but certainly not least is Palosan on one of his signature heroes, that solo mid puck. And on the other side of the river, we see Luo as looks like the solo mid juggernaut. So wasn't any of the heroes that we were expecting. Bit of a curveball. Yeah, and in the off lane, we see Kabu as his signature clockwork. And the triple lane will comprise of Icy on the Queen of Pain, Sag Heart M as the support Skywrath Mage, and Icy uh, most likely as the, or sorry, Lon M on the Darkseer. So not, I don't not playing Tiny isn't carrying a big stick. Color me disappointed, but we'll see what Rattlesnake can do. And off the bat, Look at this Observer where they've placed. Very worried about potential ganks mid, it seems. And uh, I mean, w placing this ward here, it, it tells me they're worried about Armageddon maybe running an aggressive tri lane and then trying to smoke gank mid. I'm not sure if they'd look to do it, but we'll have to see. So Merlini, with the lanes now pretty much developed, we're going to see a tri lane with a, a Naga, a Twin-Headed Dragon, as well as a Shadow Demon up against a Clockwork. They have a lot of stuns and a lot of ways to make this Clockwork very sad, even through COGS. Yeah, I don't think Clockwork is that important of a hero in this lineup. Though. If they devote that many resources to shutting down this Clockwork, I think they're just going to get a ton of farm on top. The Darkster will most likely start off in the jungle uh, with his early style shield, and we see a early ward up top lane. We see the Berserver ward to shut out this uh, Furion early, so I think that Hana will have a much harder time than Kabu as a Clockwork in this lane. And he already used Cog to try and uh, block some of the creeps. As you can see, he's like split this wave into two, and we see this common for a lot of Clockwork players. Yeah, the good news, of course, is if Nature's Prophet can't get much out of the lane, he can go into the jungle. He's going to be slower if he does it, but he will actually see the creeps already just being hitting a, an, an enemy creep and being ignored. So Hana's going to rotate uh, towards the jungle. He'll be a little bit slow going, getting there, but he will rotate there in the middle lane. Blade Fury and Palosa off the bat. Well, as soon as he saw the orb come out, he's going to go in. He's got a li little bit higher base move speed, has 10 higher, won't find the kill, but I mean, that's where if you're playing the puck, you really have to be judicious in when you use your orb. I need a little bit louder sound. Okay, well, we'll give Merlini some yeah. more sound. In the meantime, Juggernaut as well as the Puck continuing just to last hit back and forth in the middle lane. And towards the bottom lane, well, like you mentioned, there were cogs used by Kabu. He's still level one, though, isn't finding experience. And that's my one concern, is if Kabu can't find the experience in lane, there's really no plan B. They put the Darkseer in the jungle, and there's not a whole lot of places for the clockwork to go. Yep, he is trying to interrupt their farm in the jungle, but we also see Miracle go a very early split push build. Riptide and Mirror Image with no ensnare at all, so I doubt we'll be seeing a kill in the bottom lane. Uh, especially with Clockwork playing as defensively as 
as he is. And we see Darkseer already stacking some camps, so he's getting some pretty uh, good levels. Already level 2, and there is uh, a lot of the double stack remaining left to be killed. So it looks like the support on the side of Rattlesnake will already have a pretty good lead. And Luo is doing pretty good work middle. He almost has his bottle and already managing to burn quite a bit of regen on Polosan as the puck. I mean, that's really the story of this game, is the, the supports of Rattlesnake just getting more out of the jungle. We see Sag already hits level 2 off of some pulls. The, the uh, big camp, like you mentioned, being stacked and then farmed efficiently by Lamb has managed to secure uh, two stacks so far. Hasn't killed them off, though. I think he may have missed his second stack there, or maybe he killed it before I took a look. But he's still level 2. He's going to get more than a hero like Nature's Prophet, who's even for now. But once the stacks continue, he'll fall a bit farther behind. And I mean, how do you feel about the trades overall? You look at Rattlesnake, they're getting a free farm co-op top lane. Prophet's abandoned that. They're getting the Juggernaut. Not too much farm, but a lot of levels mid. So we'll see an early max on the healing ward, I do imagine. And they're getting nothing for the clockwork, a lot out of the jungle. You compare that to Armageddon first departure. I feel like overall, maybe doing a bit better uh, in terms of experience. And indeed, that's the case. Despite Prophet starting top, rotating, at least to start this game, they are slightly ahead. Yeah, and I think what's really important for this game is getting a level on Skyrath Mage. Not even for Mystic's Flare, it's for the Ancient Steel that you were talking about. And we already see him opt, uh, out of Arcane Bolt, so he, I doubt he will be scaling that until uh, way later. But going level 1 Concussive Shot as well as a level 1 Ancient Steel, I think that will be a very big deal in team fights later. Being able to lock down that Puck so he can't escape and being able to shut down Naga Siren so she can't use Sleep. So it will really be a miracle to either farm an early Diffusal Blade to purge that Ancient Seal off himself or use his mirror images very wisely so that it will be difficult for him to pinpoint the real one and lock it down. Lamb hits level 4 at 3 minutes in, kills off that big stack, heads back to base. You compare that to that Nature's Prophet, just hitting level 3, and I mean, this is just the power of Darks here in the jungle. If you're left alone, you will get a lot. Again, it's a clockwork not getting much, but he's got cogs, so at the end of the day, well, how much does it matter? We'll just have to wait and see. As for Armageddon, first departure, I think they're pretty happy with this. I, I feel like the one situation where they would really struggle is if Rattlesnake aggressive triple lanes them and they just roll that lane super hard. But getting trades early while Rattlesnake may go on to win this game, this is the kind of start that first departure wants and sort of needs if they're going to be in a decent position. Yeah, and what really sucks for the on is that he actually started off with a uh, off lane build and not a jungle build. He has Ring of Protection for his uh, potential Basilius, but he has Health Regen and Branches. You usually see a lot of uh, Nature's Prophet go many, many clarities, but this will slow down his farm quite a bit compared to the jungle Darkseer. And we see the Skyrath Mage huddle around this uh, Invis rune on top, and it looks like Radiant's they will be pushing the top tower as well as picking up the Invis rune. So, again, a lot of things going in the way of favor of Rattlesnake right now. Yeah, this this, war this rune pickup was not spotted by first departure. They have an Observer Ward defensively located in their jungle, and they're going to go in mid now. Where's that silence? The orb has been used by Peloso to farm the creep wave. This could be our first blood. Blade Fury comes out. The Ancient Seal allowing for some extra damage. He can't phase shift yet. He'll try to now. It won't be enough. First blood. Scored by Lua. And really Really, just a great rotation from the supports, I feel, for Rattlesnake. That's really the strength of their team. Just a little bit more decisive and uh, confident about where they want to move around. And first tower will go to Rattlesnake, taking that T1 on top. But meanwhile, we see first departure, four-man bottom in desperate attempts to get this tower. We even see the Nature's Prophet rotate away from the jungle. Kabu can't do much to stop this push. He's trying to slow it down, but they'll get a Tier 1 early top. And like you mentioned, Rattlesnake, they're not going to stop here. They're going to keep on going and try to force a rotation. That tower last hit goes to Hana, and I imagine maybe looking for an early Midas here since it's Watch such a passive game. Kabu's caught, but there's an Omni Slash comes through, hits two. There's your Blade Fury to follow up. Miracle on the run. Lubby as well. They're trying to juke, but they will lose Lubby. Now Luke, he's trapped inside of the Sprout. Can he get out? He doesn't have a Quelling Blade. He doesn't have Tangos. He's going to go down. That's a great trade. One for one, but you get that farming solo mid Juggernaut. You only give up a Shadow Demon. Meanwhile, though, the Tier 2 is dropping top. So if anything, Rattlesnake may be coming out slightly farther ahead overall. Yeah, top and tower two towers like down for, tower um, for FD at this point is not very good at all. It's very difficult to split push when you already have two towers down before Denied. the first night time even hits. And Skyrise Mage will be picking up some pretty good levels in uh, middle. It looks like he's already well prepared with his support items, having a smoke, obs wards, and sentry wards. And we will see these obs wards go down on a side of first departure very soon. These rune control, if Rattlestake keeps continuing to get runes, I think they're just going to keep dying around the map and not really be able to split push. But Miracle sitting on 1,000 gold right now uh, after his power trades. And really, he's the hero to watch on the side of first departure. Look at the aggressive posture of Icy. He's farming basically in the shadow of the tier 3 and top lane. He's not worried about getting ganked, Merlini, and well, I'm trying to figure out why. Palancon is visible farming mid. Uh, frankly, first departure, don't have the best heroes to gank a Queen of Pain. Shadow Demon Disrupt is alright. You follow up with an Ice Pat, that's okay. They may look to make a go on mid, but 
It's Juggernaut, tough to kill. I, Rattlesnake, just they get the two, tier, the two towers, and often you see the enemy team gets to farm safely there, and the uh, Rattlesnake would be denied, but they're not. Icy is very aggressive in his positioning, and this is where I think you rush a really fast Orchid or Scythe device, and you just snowball this Queen of Pain, and you do it hard. There's your Oblivion Staff number one. I love this choice. You look at first departure, this Orchid could ruin everything for their team. Yep, and Icy is looking really good on farm right now. And he'll be able to free farm this whole entire jungle while that top lane is pushed out. And that's really the strength of having that uh, lane pushed out. You constantly have to devote a hero to push that out. And that just leaves Darkseer and Queen of Pain both to free farm that lane. Uh, so it looks like we have a slight yeah, we'll, hiccup we'll, over here. We'll have a quick pause. It looks like one of the players from Armageddon, uh, I, I, I guess their connection hanged. I I'm su imagine he'll be back relatively soon. But it does give us a chance to kind of break down the game, game take more of a look at the trades that are being made overall. Taking a quick look at the gold graph, it's actually about a 3,000 gold lead for Rattlesnake. Now, they did take two towers top to only the one of First Departure. They also got the First Blood, so that accounts for probably over half of the gold differential, or about half. Doesn't account for it all. We'll have a quick unpause. They're also leading in terms of experience. They've really caught up, and I mean, it's just, for me, it's the Jungle Darkseer that's making it happen, as well as the fact that Queen of Pain was continuing to get farm in that safe lane, even after the Tier 2 went down. I want to note one interesting thing, Merlini, which is they rotated Sag mid and they gave him level priority in the mid lane when Juggernaut and Queen of Pain were not there. He's already level 5 as a support roaming Skywrath mage. That's really good. Yeah, and I think they're doing a really good job of distributing all the farm and the levels. And Lil, although he did die bottom, he still got a kill out of it and Omni Slash was on cooldown, so not a big loss there. And they got a lot of towers, so they're making very efficient use of just moving their heroes around the map and just wearing... Uh, first departure thin. Again, they really don't have the lineups to kill these really defensive heroes such as Queen of Pain and Clockwork and Juggernaut. And if they devote that many resources, they'll just get a lot of farm around the map. And it looks like Nature's Prophet is going for a Midas. Only 400 gold away at this point. My key hero for first departure is the Puck for Palosa. And right now, he's farming pretty well. If he gets a fairly early blink, I feel he could control the game for them. They still have their tier 1 up mid. They still have their tier 1 up bottom. That allows them to farm relatively safely in your key lanes as well as the jungle, which is Really what a split pushing kind of defensive team like First Departure cares about. But if he dies a few times, if that blink is delayed, that's where I think they're going to be lane. in a lot of trouble. Looks like Action Bottom Lane is about to pick up Cogs. Are there to trap in? Well, actually, Kabu trapped himself in with Lubby. It's that Dark Seer Clockwork combo, and they're finding kills. Now Miracle with the sleep, going to look for a turnaround. Can they get it? Trance being summoned. Look for the surround. Look for that Warcraft 3 micro. Are we going to get it? Kabu, low. Will go down. Lamb able to surge. Should be able to get away. Not actually because Palazzo is here. 3-3. Three to three. Great reactions from First Departure. And really, that's what you want to do against an aggressive team like Rattlesnake. Have TPs ready. Stay close to your carries and just react wherever they go. Yeah, good use of sleep right there, and it looks like Rattlesnake will continue to put pressure around the map, and Icy's well on his way to work it right now, just getting free reign of top lane, as well as these two heroes just getting free reign of mid. We see Skyrath Mage already almost level 6 compared to this to the Shadow Demon, who's still level 3, and things are not looking good for him at all, especially once that Mystic Flare gets up and running. Yeah, on the side of Rattlesnake, they do they did lose the tier 1 bottom. They haven't really done much to slow down Miracle, who's going for a very safe build. We see a team that is often known for their, well, not aggressive play, but just aggressive split pushing. Defensive build, looks like he may even go for drums first. Maybe he'll go back for something like a Defusal Blade, but we're entering kind of that passive state of the game where Queen of Pain tries to get her Orchid, Darkseer most likely goes towards his mechanism, and we sort of see from there... Uh, what the other items pick up, pickups are. We've talked a lot about Rattlesnake and what they need to do, Merlini. What does First Departure need to do? Are there certain items they should be going for? Are there certain objectives they should be focusing on? What's your thoughts? I think they really can't afford to lose these T1 towers. If they lose this T1 in mid and the T1 on bottom, they just completely lose control of their jungle and they just won't be able to get the farm up on Miracle that he needs. We already see Icy just farm like already up to the T2 tower on the left side and if they extend that area that they can farm to uh, pretty much uh, like this T2 tower on bottom as well as all the way to... If they can confine them just right. outside our T3s, it's just going to be really bad news. And it looks like Rattlesnake is aiming to take this T1 in a minute, and they do actually do not have a glyph up right now. Something we saw the other day is whenever you have healing ward in the Dota 2 Super League, you can push and... Well, Rattlesnake, no mechanism, no big team fight items, but they do have good levels, and they're going to muscle down a Tier 1 without nary a response from First Departure. Hulk comes in, long range from Kabu. A rare miss, but he'll find a puck anyway. Now Kogsman gets disrupted. Dropping low. Is he going to go down? Pull also. He's got a face shift. Pull orb away. He's still alive. Rattlesnake are driven back. He's going to live on 50 HP. Icy was hunting him. Couldn't find the kill. A great defensive display by first departure. They do get out, but 
They were scared. They couldn't take the fight, and that makes me a little worried for them. They gave up that tier one mid unopposed. Where are they going to make their stand? And Miracle did get some free fire on bottom, but that's not the type of trade you're looking for. You lose a T1. They almost got the deny off, but Puck Top not lane. being able to... Hanna's caught out. He's going to try to TP away. Icy brings him low. Can he bring him down? He will. He shoots. He scores. And, well, the now a haste in for Lau. And like you said, the towers start to drop. The kills really open up. Yeah, and Rattlesnake's just really making good use of these jungle. We see constant double stacking by Darkseer, and he's level 8 as the uh, jungle, so he's looking pretty good. And it just looks like First Departure is not in any room to push the towers at all. They're always so far away from the T1s, and it looks like they are trying to smoke and pick off Queen of Pain up top. So They're very close to his Orchid. Oh, this is such a good time to kill off Icy. If they can do it, they have the disruption mid-turn to blink. Ice Path will follow up on the mark. Now the silence as well. They bring him down. An absolutely essential kill. Here comes a hasted juggernaut on the back lines. Ken Luau turned this fight around for his team. He's got Omni Slash. You don't want to hit the puck because he'll face shift right out. Scripted. Blade Fury is going to dodge the ice path now. He's caught out. The man of many names will be going down. But they trade a Queen of Pain for a Twin Headed Dragon and a Smoke. It was a big investment. I think it's worth it because what are they doing? They're right in their wheelhouse. Miracle split pushing mid and then Hana pushing mid. Uh, or sorry, pushing bottom and Hana pushing mid. Yeah, then that was just a really important time to kill Queen of Bane. Sitting around 650 gold, very, very close to her Orchid Malevolence. And that is one farm Queen of Bane. Level 9, Treads, and almost Orchid. That's just really, Here comes really Kabu fast. mid lane. He's got a hook. Is he going to look to use it? He loves to pump fake and bait out the phase shift. He'll do it. Now the silence. There won't be a phase shift for, for Peloso. Not yet. Eating Blade Fury damage. Dropping low will go down. And, I mean, it's this pocket Skyrath Mage pick, I almost want to call it. Maybe not a pocket pick, but an unusual choice. The silence is just doing work right now. What do you do if you're this puck? I just don't know how Palazzo deals with that silence. I mean, they have four wards up on the map right now. Well, this one just recently taken down by uh, Sag. But notice they actually don't have vision of the area that Rattlesnake was just in. They don't have uh, vision of this area, and that's where they came from. They really just need better vision around the map so that Puck can get the defensive items that he needs. And he should be able to Radiant's blink away from any sort of imminent attack. danger. I, silence doesn't actually do any damage. I, I fully agree with you, Merlini. I'm just looking at Lubby. 650 net worth. He can't even afford wards right now. That puts a lot on the Twin Headed Dragon. They just, they don't have the tower gold. They weren't getting as much out of the jungle early. They have 13 creeps between the two of them. That makes it hard to buy wards. Yeah, and the Shadow Team is not even level 6 yet, and that's going to continuously be a problem for them if he's weak. Uh, I mean, Juggernaut and Queen of Pain are just going attack. to wreck that hero, especially once he, she gets that Orchid. And here comes a backstab. Kabu's got an Invisor, and prepare to be hooked. He'll actually walk in range of a sentry, but he was on the high ground, wasn't spotted out. Now hooks in, catches the puck, not to hear you want to catch, but there's your Omni Slash. Not enough just yet. They're going to throw everything at that puck. They'll bring him down again. Palazzo nice. eating some serious hate. Coil caught too. Profit ult bounces through as well, but where's that follow-up damage? Nobody's going in. In fact, Miracle is on the run. Screen of Pain, Queen, Pen, Queen of Pain ult will be there. Lubby tries to TP out on the high ground, but the Son of the Siren is going to keep him alive. A beautiful play. Meanwhile, Hana stalling the game, pushing it out. It's just going to be patience and defensive play, evading fights for first departure from here on out, because they're not getting this Puck Blink Dagger. Miracle after the Son of the Siren, unable to TP out because it was cooling down. Is he going to juke? What? A juke! Icy's trapped in the trees. He can't get out. Now Miracle running towards the side shop. Icy on the hunt. And now Miracle might go down anyway in spite of that. Kabu, what can he do? He wants Miracle, but Miracle pops the illusion and he brings Kabu low. Jams it in with the rocket. Holy shit indeed, Lumi. And now the orb comes through. Kabu's low. Can he get out of here? I don't know if he can. The sprout. And then the auto attacks. They bring him down. Rattlesnakes, this high risk, high reward play style. I mean, you gotta, you gotta give a lot of credit to Miracle. Sure, he goes down, but he stalled forever. Yeah, and he saved the Shadow Demon too. Pretty clutch sleep. Right Not there. really what you want, but better than nothing. Yep, he is level six now, though, so that is one saving grace for that team fight. And it looks like they will be able to consistently put this pressure on mid. No glyph over a rattlesnake, and their heroes aren't really in position to defend quite yet. Yeah, they're going to try and push, but it's scary to go in towards that juggernaut. Rattlesnake have great counter push, a decent amount of AoE, and more importantly, so many spells that if they catch you under the tower, you're screwed. You get vacuumed into the tower, into a Blade Fury, into an Omni Slash, into an Iron Shell or Cogs, you are just going to melt. So, reluctantly, they will back off. They're still looking for their second Tier 1. We're now 15 minutes in. This is a split pushing lineup. Or sorry, excuse me, their third Tier 1. They did get the one top while the action was going on elsewhere. Hana's going for a mech. I got to pick your brain. How do you feel about this with the way the game is developing? I kind of feel like it's not going to do much. It's a rather late mech. I mean, they've been losing a lot of these team fights early, and as soon as this T1 goes down on bottom, they're really going to be confined. So they're going to have to try and.
push Rattlesnake away from their side of the base just so they, they can get that farm on a Miracle. Miracle's still pretty poor right now. Sure, he has power dreads and drums, but compare that to some of the other heroes on Rattlesnake, and it's actually not that good, especially considering how weak his supports are and how far away this puck is from his blink. Merlini, you wanted more wards, but they don't have them, and Rattlesnake's coming in for a big backstab. There's your silence. Miracle's caught out. Now it's a huge Skyrath Mage ult, but a beautiful disruption. Lovey will keep his hero safe for the meantime. Purge on Icy, who blinks away, says, okay, I'll kill one of your other farmers instead. Profit hits the deck in addition uh, to that Twin Headed Dragon. So in the end, Rattlesnake, they find a couple of kills, and that's, I gotta say, first departure. Sure, they got caught there, but a well-executed retreat. The problem is, a well-executed retreat is only minimizing the losses. It's not really preventing them from taking structural damage, as the Tier 2 is now under Siege mid. Yeah, this healing ward is just incredible at sustaining pushes. They got the T1 on bottom, they got two kills, and they're still not done. They might take Roshi and Sue once Healing Ward is up again. And this is just the power of a Juggernaut. And Radiant although he isn't really seen as solo mid, once he gets those levels up and running with Max Blade Fury and Healing Ward, he is just a beast. And in some ways, much better than Coddle at sustainability for team fights. And it looks like they are smoked. First departure is ready to retaliate. Well, man, this is a hard smoke. Middle lane is at their base. This is like the most ob obvious smoke you will ever see. They're going to head towards the top side of the map. Rattlesnake, our bottom. And this is really just a sign that first departure is a bit desperate, but it could be a clever smoke if they're just going for a tower, which, well, is it the case? It seems like they're hunting to kill. They hope to get one kill and then go on the tower. I don't know if they'll get there in time. And end of the day, Rattlesnake, I don't think they're going to give this one up without a fight. They've got the Orchid. They've got the mech. We'll see, though. Maybe they're content to trade. They're not going to look towards Roche, but they are going to rotate Kabu mid. This hook has been leading the way time and time again. Hana, oh, this is bold, about to be caught out. Here comes Kabu. Where's the hook? Waiting and lurking. He's finding the angle. Can he get it off? Not yet. There, yes, he will. Oh, my goodness. Somebody play the NBA Jam music because this guy is slamming it in time and time again. We really need to get the announcer pack here in the studio. One of the many things that the Kickstarter dollars are going towards. And, well, in the meantime, Armageddon, first part, they get a tier one, tier two top. So, frankly, it's not a bad trade. Yeah, not a bad trade at all, uh, especially since he already bought his mech. I don't think he actually lost any gold from it, considering most of his gold was reliable with and, that hand of Midas. And, and best thing is, Midas was on cooldown. <laughs> Midas Reminder will be very happy. So important. <laughs> but Rattlesnake's in a very good position to take out Roshan right now, and they're just getting a lot of farm. Looking at the XP graph, we see almost 7,500 experience in favor of Rattlesnake as a Dire, and around 6,500 in favor of gold, although we do see a little bit of a dip after that T2 tower was taken out. Lamb's had his mech for a little while as well, and oh, this is something that I was actually talking to, well, Winter was talking to me about the last time that I cast with him. Blade Fury, as well as Iron Shell Juggernaut, this hurts like a bitch, and it stays on you even when you Blade Fury. Let's see what they go for, but for the time being, might look for a kill. Lamb, just gonna push the waves in. Merlini, it's kind of one of those weird games where we were talking all night and all day about the split push of First Departure, but if anyone's split pushing and just trying to win this through a war of attrition and farm, kind of feels like it's Rattlesnake. Farming the enemy jungle, farming mid, and then farming their top lane and jungle as well. That's really how you counter split push, though. Just keeping all the lanes in, keeping them contained so they can't push out the lane past the river. And they've been doing a really, really good job of doing that, only losing a couple of towers in the process and finding tons of farm. Looks like they will further try and limit uh, first Departure's Vision with his early gem pickup on Queen of Pain. They don't have any Invis heroes right now. No one going for Shadow Blade. They purely just want this to take out the wards, secure Roshan, and just contain First Departure into their maybe like 20% of the map. I love it. It's exactly like you said. It's a map control style. It's this boa constrictor style. They may be called Rattlesnake, but make no mistake about it. They are trying to win, not by rattling their tails, but by choking the life out of First Departure. It's hard to do it, though, against the Nature's Prophet, against Anaga Siren, who's been doing a decent job, Miracle has, of keeping his illusions in multiple lanes, keeping the lanes out. It's a hard lineup to actually win via that constricting style, but they've got the Tier 2 down now mid. Armageddon, First Departure, no Outer Towers remaining. It's going to be hard to keep the map control up, and the bigger problem for me, Merlini, it's going to be very hard to stop this Roche. In fact, dare I say it, they can't. Naga Siren is one of the kings of Roche. Oh, that's can get very that sleep, true. If you can get a sleep off, it doesn't actually affect Roshan, so... It also sets up the macro part of the ice path, as well as the coil. Okay, scratch that. They have a shot, but getting there and getting there undetected is going to be the hard part. Yep, this would be a perfect time to smoke, but I don't, I don't know if they actually have one right now. 
I mean, if they smoke now, I feel Rattlesnake, they'll just back off. It's not like first departure going to kill this fast. They're even pushing in bottom lane. They're ping on it. They know, but yeah. what can they do? With the healing ward, everyone's at full HP. They use the gem to uh, de-ward this uh, very common rune ward, and first departure just can't run in their blind. It's too risky at this point, and they just pretty much have to play passive, even just giving them this free Aegis. They lost all the T2s, and Roshan is down. We could expect a T3 push soon, but again, Eastern teams are generally known for being very, very patient with their base pushes, often farming up a critical amount of items and uh, just waiting for that huge deficit to overcome that uh, huge positional advantage, right. disadvantage. I mean, it's rather. like you said, you have to get all the lanes, push them in, and keep, the, and keep them pushed in. And that's a tall order against Naga. Even Puck, a decent counter pusher. And then, of course, Naga Siren. Bottom lane, they're thinking about a go on the wall. This is a questionable decision with an Aegis there, but they'll blow the Aegis up in a matter of seconds. Now they just have to get out. Well, I said questionable, but if you do it that well, they will, and even an ice pack to cover the retreat. That was, I got to say, a picture-perfect gank. Yeah, that was very, very nice. Juggernaut opting for the uh, Klee build with the Battle Fury. So we usually see a phase drums uh, Yasha build on Juggernaut, but this guy is going for more of a hard carry build. And I think that's a very good idea in order to uh, keep these illusions down. They don't have too much in the way of AoE besides uh, Queen of Pain, and she's most likely going to be using her AoE spells to clear out the weak supports, not wasting them on illusions. So that'll be up to the Juggernaut to cleave him out so his Omni Slash can be used to full potential. And... First departure right now, they're just confined. Look at their positioning right now. They're forced to stick around very, very close to each other and not being able to move around the map at all. They have one ward at the moment, but again, they can't really see any of the heroes with this ward. It's not a very effective ward, but that's to what, just what happens when uh, Rattlesnake picks up an early gem like that. BKB are in pain too. Oh my goodness. So now the question is, what do they have to deal with that? They do have net. They have purge, which isn't really great versus a BKB Queen of Pain. Hana caught in a bad spot top. He's going to drop a sprout to try and cover his retreat. The hook. A rare miss from Kabu. Will he TP out in time? It's cooling down. He had a teleport scroll. He opted not to use it, and that's going to spell, I think, his downfall. Now eating battery salt, but on the back lines is Lamb. I think the bigger kill. Gets caught out, drops a wall, does some good damage, doesn't kill off Miracle yet. Now, finally, Hana will go down. Will he buy back? He could if he wants to. Depends if they think they need him. On one side, it's Sag. Manning up versus Lubby. On the other side, it's Kabu on the run. He found that profit. Is he going to pay? Buy back from Hana, looking to come in with that medical assistance from the high ground. Well, he TPs in now, gets the mech off in the nick of time. Miracle sends out a sleep. He's trying to keep Pulas on alive. He phase shifts the final. Killing Nuke from the Skyrath Mage. Now Kabu trapped in the cogs. First departure might just be out fighting. Oh, well, they were out fighting Rattlesnake, but now who <laughs> comes in? This is a mad juggernaut with a Battle Fury, with Omni Slash online. And in the end, they lose two, they get three. They did have to buy back on their Nature's Prophet, who died again. That's my concern for them because I feel late game, this is all Prophet and Naga Siren, and I don't think anyone else will do a thing. But given how that fight started, you got to say, first departure are really playing the fights well. Midas was off cooldown. That's the most important part. Oh, no. <laughs> What's Nature's Prophet going to do? But that's going to be very, wah. very late. It, it will, yeah, this is such a fail. Fire, fire him as well while you're at it. But, I mean, really, I think the buyback was still worth it. It's just he helped keep his teammates alive. He helped turn the fight. They killed a bunch of cores from Rattlesnake, but it was an expensive out turn. Of it. Right. And we see a boost of travel pick up on Alon M, the Darkseer. So he'll be able to, uh, again, split push the split pushers with this lineup. And as we've seen, like... For, uh, Rattlesnake has been doing a really good job about just forcing First Departure to fight 5-on-5 five five as opposed to 4-on-5. Naga Siren has not been the split pusher that Miracle is known for, but this is just due to the constant aggression by Rattlesnake. And again, I, th I just think they've been doing a really good job of being efficient around the map, containing First Departure, taking fights where they need to, and just pressuring them into this oh, really defensive Here position. comes the Shadow Blade. Hana's about to be very sad. Maybe not. The creep show up, Lua. He hasn't followed your guide, Merlini. He hasn't checked when the creep plays spawn <laughs> and come in. I know it's actually... Uh, I'm, I'm joking. But it's one of the things that you did mention your tutorial. Doesn't time it properly, blows the Omni Slash and doesn't get a much help. Gets yep. shot. Mid lane, there's gonna be a hook from Kabu, but Miracle's pretty tanky. Macro Pyre now is burning him alive. He's actually, or not, sorry, not burning him alive, but he's dropping Kabu fairly low in return. The twin headed dragon now pulls on the run, eats a Skyrath Mage ult, gets pulled back in, will go down. They lose two cores and a Shadow Demon. Rattlesnake, they and drop. And a chicken, and there's a gem. Oh my oh, god, he has they'll to pick it up. CP. Oh my god, that's a very costly trade. And now I see he's looking for four. If they get four with this BKB, they might be able to go with Pie Ground. Rattlesnake, oh. they'll take four. Wicked sick. 
they didn't even have the Aegis, and now, well, we could be looking at, if not Rax, then certainly a lot of damage to the Tier 3. Yeah, and they lost a gem out of that, so Juggernaut will continue to pros problems with that, and they won't be able to Dior, so again, that's a huge loss for uh, first departure right there. So Eastern teams pick up gems quite early. Even My bad. Yeah. Can they actually fight this? They do have the coil, and I think Rattlesnake, they may just back off. They have the healing ward. Well, this is going to be interesting. Orb comes in, does a little bit of chip damage. Now the silence, he misses it. Oh, he's in trouble now. He gets the coil off, but he will drop. And there's no follow-up because Twin-Headed Dragon was respawning, still at the fountain. That's a buyback into a death, into a blown coil, and that may cost them Rex. They could sleep set up right now, though. Watch for that Naga Siren sleep. Look at Rattlesnake. A, a decent spread. I wouldn't say perfect. Ice Path is going to catch out Icy. He'll eat. A net as well. Now the Macro Pyre comes. They're going to drop him low. He will go down. He didn't have his BKP. Used it earlier. Now Kabu caught in his cogs. He tries to man up with the Ion Shell. He's doing huge, huge damage. The sleep is here. But can they get away? They're going to hoof it back to the fountain while that's happening. Lua, he's inside of the Shadow Blade. He'll back off in the end. Didn't have Omni Slash. This is a very scrappy game from first departure. They're down by 10k gold. They're down by 14k experience. I don't feel good about their chances, but considering they're making mistakes, they're still doing enough to keep them in the game. Yep, they did hold that push and managing to take out a very key hero in the Queen of Pain. So very nice, uh, very nice net by by Miracle. We, we actually saw him uh, defuse the defuse the ancient seal off him too. So wow. nice use of defuse I didn't even by catch him. that. That's a great play. Yeah, while he was inside the cog, so that he could song the siren and just run away, barely saving uh, two of his teammates' lives. So we'll see Roshan respawn in about four minutes now, and I fully expect Rattlesnake to make a push at that. That T3 tower is very, very low middle. And no Trent Protector in this game to heal that one up. <laughs> well, we'll see if Gods gets his wish for that perfect OP we'll hero. Smoke. They're looking for some aggression. And they're going to smoke. They just ran past the Dire Observer Ward before deploying the smoke. I think this will be rather obvious. Mid lane is... All the lanes are fairly pushed out, but with them walking past that ward, should be pretty clear. Luag is going to look to farm one more creep camp than I imagine will be backing right off. And without the gem, without any detection, if they find him, they are not going to be able to kill him unless they net him before he blade fears because it does... Or before he shadow blades. It does reveal Invis. Well, are they going to find him? Miracle's the one who leads the way. He catches out Kabu, eats a silence, then blinks away. They're playing scared. They're going to back off. Instead, they leave Miracle alone. He eats an Omni Slash to Queen of Pain on all the hate in the world, and he will go down, not Kabu. Well, he's on the hunt. He doesn't have Hulk. He already used it. Armageddon first departure. They go for a long smoke gank. A bit of, uh, not quite a Hail Mary, but a low percentage play doesn't pan out. Yeah, great awareness by uh, Rattlesnake there. And again, this ward, very, very clutch. They knew that all four more heads to the secret shop, and they didn't see them with the second ward here, which recently disappeared, or maybe it just got sentry. But regardless, very nice awareness and reaction by Rattlesnake. And again, just probably waiting until this next Roshan, a couple minutes until that. Let's see if there are any core items uh, that are coming up soon. Juggernaut's sitting on 3,000 right now. What, and what do you go for here if you're this Juggernaut? I mean, he could just go for more damage. Uh, maybe a Manta if he wants to split out of the Silence or uh, just prevent himself from being focused down from a snare. But, I mean, really, he has all the items that he needs. He could honestly just save for buyback. And uh, with Aegis and that, I think they could just break the T3 and the Rex at this point. Uh, Queen of Pain, very, very strong at this point. Also a Ghost Scepter oh, I to love try it. and counter that... Uh, Go, that net from Miracle. Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, you when you go into the he's sitting right on top of that ward, though. Oh, he's BKB. It'll blink away, and there's just no way to deal with him. Dream Coil does not affect you when you're BKB. He blinks right out. Doesn't get stunned. Will escape, but Hana might not be so lucky. He just teleported top. Actually, Kabu doesn't feel he can kill him on his own. Hana with the mech as well as an Ultima, a bit tanky and. I mean, despite all his buyback or his earlier buybacks, he's still doing okay in terms of farm. Looks like he might be able to get a sight device, uh, say, in the next three to four minutes. If he gets that up, well, maybe they still have a shot. They're down by a lot of gold, but I just feel their lineup, very good at turtling, very good at stalling. And I guess, Merlini, then the question becomes, if First Departure does drag this game out for another 15, 20 minutes, do you think they can take it late? I don't know. I think it has to be even longer than 15, 20 minutes for them to take this late. Uh, I mean, Juggernaut and Queen of Pain are just really, really difficult to, to kill right now. Sure, you can kill all of them, but if they have the Aegis, if they have buybacks, you won't be able to constantly uh, kill them. And with a healing ward, they look, look at them right now. They're just containing the whole map right now, taking control of their jungle, observing ward, their ancient camp, just limiting their farm so heavily. And they're just doing a really great job about keeping this gold difference Constantly in favor of Rattlesnake. The gold graph took a slight blip up uh, after that uh, failed T3 push, but regardless, around 11,000, 12,000 in favor of Rattlesnake. And this graph just keeps going down. And I just don't see a first departure ever turning this up unless they have a 
amazing Roshan defense. Speaking of Roshan, he spawns in about one minute's time from now. Yeah, he'll be coming up soon. And I, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. They're getting more. The graph is certainly reflecting it. But First Departure is getting everything they can, considering they can't get as much. They're farming multiple camps with Miracle, also farming the lane simultaneously, using great micro to drive Icy back, as well as just get as much gold and experience as he can. And Profit doing a nice job pushing the lanes out. But I mean, end of the day, it's the point you made, which is I'm just looking at the map vision for First Departure right now. And I feel it's claustrophobic. You just don't know where Rattlesnake is. And with Roche about to respawn, that's a concern. Yeah, and I mean, things are just looking very, very scary. And it just hit nighttime, too. So Miracle does not actually have as many items as he usually does at the stage of the game. Only seeing on Trez, Diffusal, and Drums with a casual VIP booster. It looks like Scripted is in big trouble. Oh, caught in the cogs. Brought down fast. Like you mentioned, well, they needed the vision up. They had to de-ward some of Rattlesnake's aggressive wards. But Kabu was prepared for it. An easy pickoff. And... Now with the gem, they're going to find some additional sentries. And it's just, I'm going to take another look at the net worth of these supports. And that's the, I think that's really the tale of the game. Sure, the carries of Rattlesnakes are far better, but I'm looking at these first departure supports. Combined 5k net worth or so, then you look at the supports, if you can even call them that, of Rattlesnake. A Clockwork with 8k, not even a support really. And then even a Skyrath Mage who by himself has more gold than both of the first departure 4 and 5 position players. Now Luol's going in with a Shadow Blade. He's got a blade break that Puck face shift if he, if he wants to go for a kill. Otherwise, Colossum will be able to get out of here. Luol in the end won't find the kill. He's actually gone for a Basher. A little bit unusual, but what do you think? Pretty good lockdown, I think, especially if they get BKBs. It's a really nice lockdown for Puck, but he has a Ghost Scepter right now. Uh, I mean, more damage is always good. I don't, again, I don't really think his item choice is that important. It's really just these plays. So, 31 minutes in, Rattlesnake has just over double the kills of First Departure. Killed 21 to 10 right now, and Roshan is going to be the hot spot in these next couple minutes. Kabu. We see uh, Treant sitting in there right now. Kabu's got the Aghanim Scepter. Could, is he going to go for a Hulk? There's your silence. Hulk to follow Miracle Call in a very bad position. Drops low to a Queen of Pain and will be brought down. And what a time to go down, and what a time to pause. The wall was dropped mid. It's going to be a massive team fight momentarily. Not sure what the pause is all about. We'll be finding out in just a few moments, I imagine. But Merlini, we have a moment to examine the fight. Call it like a pseudo instant <laughs> replay. Walk me through what you're seeing right now. Who's going to come out on top? Well, just before that, uh, the Naga Saturn actually tried to defuse the Orchid and sleep, but that assault battery kept him from sleeping. I saw her trying to cast that animation, but that cast animation, just a little bit too slow. So looking at this, looks like Sag is Definitely dead, and he's probably going to lose a gem too. There's oh. no way he's getting out from this one. Well, I think I think the other question is, uh, what's going to stop Luo right now? He's coming into the Shadow Demon as well as the Twin Headed Dragon. I see a Shadow Demon about to disrupt a Dark Seer, which means Omni Slash is going to absolutely butcher these two supports. Yeah, and they don't have a Sentry laid down either, so he can just Shadow Blade in if he wishes and just yeah crush them. I <laughs> things are not looking that's, good. For that's them the at one all. thing that scares me for First Departure. I think they can get the gem here. Maybe they TP away with him and then retreat out with Hana, but the two supports look dead. I don't see yeah, them taking the fight. I think they're definitely dead, and then that'll be almost guaranteed Roshan, especially without Naga there to fan. You, I mean, you could buy back for this, but without your true supports, you can't do anything. They do have the potential to turtle in their T3, though, with a very nice uh, Naga Siren Sleep into a Macro Pyre with Dual Breath, Ice Path, and all the Puck spells. I think that has the potential for turtling, but... Right. Again, that's pretty much their only line of defense right now. They just constantly lose these team fights. Miracle is not getting the farm that he needs. And Rattlesnakes, again, just not giving them any room to breathe. As you said before, they're not doing it by rattling their tails. They're doing it by choking their... <laughs> <laughs> choking it's a, their, their name's a misnomer. I'm just saying Rattlesnake, if you want a little you know, design mm -hmm. advice, I could well, help could be you like out. Rattling their I'm sabers, a professional. Sabers, rattling their, rattling their little <laughs> tails. I'm not. Merlini, <laughs> you're drunk. Go home. He, he had too many drinks of BJ's, what could I say? He skipped the Pazuki, went straight to the shots, and here you go. Total mess. But like you said, they can turtle. It's the, the Roche is the problem. They're going to give that up, and I feel like Rattlesnake... I was a little... I was impressed by First Departure getting rid of that Aegis so quickly, but I don't think Rattlesnake is going to make the same mistake again. With this Aegis, it's hard to break the base in Easter Dota, like you said, because the teams are so defensive and patient. But getting an Aegis, that's what allows you to slow Siege with your Juggernaut. If he dies, he comes back. He Omnis, and suddenly the fight's a lot different. I mean, this T3 is already so low, though. Under 400 HP right now, and they just have so many items. Clockwork has a Scepter, Queen of Pain has BKB, Orchid, and Ghost Scepter, and we see an uh, unpause right now. We're going to unpause. It looks to be uh, some very sad supports, but actually Lua was spotted from the high ground, sprouted, and they're going to get away. Palasa also doesn't snag the gem. Looks like he might have denied it, or it's on the floor, and I just can't Wait, see it. Wait, how do they see him? They didn't even have a Sentry War down there. Uh, what was that ninja sprout? 
Oh, I'm baffled, to be honest. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, that was just perfect execution by first approach there. Regardless, it went totally as we did not predict. And it looks but like only not Rattlesnake Sire doesn't done. care. Fine, we don't get the kill. We're going to go high ground anyway. At least force you to maybe buy back on that Naga Siren, and then they'll back off if that's the case. And speaking of buyback, well, there's your Macro Pyre. They'll chip away at the tower. It's going to be Glyphs. They'll back off. They've got the mech. And it's about getting this lane pushed in, but here's where First Departure starts to find their stride, perhaps. Pushing in top is Hana. He's up to 2,600 gold. Scythe of Vice, not far off. Could be a game changer because I look at Rattlesnake and as much damage as they can dish out. Juggernaut, Queen of Pain, Skyrath Mage. These three heroes, they get caught by a Scythe of Vice. They could get blown up quickly, and the fight could snowball the other way from there. Yep, and again, they might find a stride at this point. That T3 tower has actually taken uh, a little bit of fire from these creeps, and I mean, they're getting close to a point where they may actually be able to push out these lanes. They're actually only behind by one tower at this point. Rattlesnake only has one T2 left, and that's around half HP, so even though the gold difference is pretty large right now, the tower count is actually still very close. Look at this cheeky play by Miracle. It's just a parade of illusions all over the map, coating it like ants. Uh, in a kitchen where there's some honey on the counter, I suppose. And, well, Armageddon, they're just going to back off and look to farm. See a smoke in the middle. Oh, oh, Rattlesnake. They know they need to find a pick to take this Roche. Without it, like you said, some of the Siren is just too good at the Roshan pit, too risky to go straight in. So they'll smoke. They'll actually, it looks like they'll smoke behind Icy, who's now up to 3k gold. I imagine we'll work towards the site device. Abyssal Blade complete. There's your lockdown for Lua. If he can get in range, which is going to be tough for him, considering, I mean, they have net. They have Song of the Siren if he's not... Uh, if he's not able to, to get in time, and it seems like they just have preternatural awareness. I think they awareness. might scout Kabu right here. Here's your hook. He's going to come in. He will catch out Miracle, who's quickly dropping. In terms of HP, he can't cast the spell. Caught in the cogs. Eatering battery salt will go down. What a clutch Observer War right there. It was used to block the spawn, not even blocking any spawn for five minutes and just being able to secure that very, very timely kill. And they can either make the T3 push at this point without, uh, without the Glyph and get the Rax, or just do Roshan, or they might even do both. Or they might just go mid. <laughs> Let's see what they do. Uh, they could go Roche, like you mentioned, but I like this idea of putting pressure on the mid lane, try to force that buyback out from the Naga. Here comes your Hulk, Aghanim, Scepter, Kabu, looking to win game one for his team. Two vacuum back towards the cogs. One gets blown up. Quick to hit the deck is that Twin-Headed Dragon. Now a coil that catches three, a silence two, but Rattlesnake are too tanky. Nobody's dropping. Double kill in the shadow of the tier fours, and it looks like one lane of racks, possibly more, about to go down. 26 to 12. Rattlesnake not quite as dominant early game as what I expected from them, but they've now taken their first lane of racks and another hook, another kill. It's just one to the next to the next. Maybe not, with, but the Song of the Siren forced out. That means Roche is there for the pickings, and I don't see First Departure fighting it without Song of the Siren on cooldown for two minutes because Naga is not level 16 yet. Yeah, I mean, and they use a couple of buybacks too. And I, I mean, I thought Naga bought back, but it was a little bit too late. And uh, most of the heroes were already dead by that time that Song of the Siren uh, got off and a lot of the damage has already been done to the base. T3 tower down, range barracks already taking a little bit of damage and that melee barracks is down. And I don't think they can take this Roshan pit fight, especially without Song of the Siren up. Uh, sure, they don't have wall, but they still are, they're still five strong. They'll be topped off from healing ward, and I think Rattlesnake is just in a position to uh, crush first departure in the next five minutes. Yeah, they take that next Roche. Uh, they take the Roche. They go for the next lane of Rax, and the sleep will be on cooldown by then. But it's at the point in the game where, with healing ward as well as the mechanism, frankly. The AoE damage is mostly negated unless you can kill the healing ward. They have the units to do it with the Naga Illusions and the Triant pro uh, the, or the Prophet's Triants, but haven't really been able to kill it quickly enough, I feel, in these fights. And now, Rattlesnake, they'll smoke right off the Roche and head into the enemy jungle. Pull also on being scouted by Kabu. He's hunting, and he sees a delicious little treat. Well, this doesn't look good. Yeah, they really need the silence on him from Skyrath Mage. Well, he's going to try to orb away. I have some very clowny sound effects here in the studio, but he'll blink south into the tree line. will try to TP out and gets away in the end. So, nice reaction. I still kind of feel only for stalling the inevitable. Yep, so 12 to 26 in uh, favor of Rattlesnake. Gold difference has expanded to Sweet around 17,400 at this point. And, I mean, it just keeps on getting larger again. It might seem like they're still kind of close in the game just because they defend a little bit of these pushes. But, again, Eastern Dota, they tend to play very, very safe. And as soon as they get what they want, they back off to the base. We rarely see fountain dives over extensions. That is just very atypical of this. And I think Rattlesnake is just executing very, very well, backing off when they know they don't have that advantage anymore. Yeah, Scythe of Vice now up on the darks here. I, again, I look at this team. There's only one hero who's not getting a whole lot of farm. That's Sag. On the Skyrath Mage, they don't need him to farm much. He has the, the max 
rank in Ancient Seal, the silence is always there for, and sure, you can remove that with things, uh, well, you can at least avoid some of the physical damage from Omni Slash with things like the Ghost Scepter, you can purge it off of yourself, but it doesn't matter. It's just a nice additional silence. The damage he puts out is absolutely ridiculous. Rattlesnake, it's a four core lineup at this point in the game, and Armageddon first departure. I even look at this Naga Siren from Miracle. this isn't a carry. It can be a carry hero, not the strongest late game the Naga, but can do a serviceable job with enough items. Naga Siren is not out carrying four heroes with this kind of lack, well, with this lack of farm. Yeah, Darkseer is just huge right now. Boost of Travel, Mech, Four Staff, and a complete a Scythe of Ice. Kabu almost has his uh, Pipe of Insight, should he choose to go that, and I don't think they can take with team fight with this item, item advantage so great, but Naga is really, really good at turtling, and if you can ever catch uh, three of them in a line for THD sleep, especially with only one BKB on their team, it could swing in their favor. Thanks. I'm just, yeah, like you said, good at turtling, not even just for killing off the creep wave coming in that lane, but also because she can push out the other lanes. Mid lane gets pushed out by some illusions with Riptide, but Rattlesnake, they have the healing ward, one of the best abilities in the game to break the base, and they're going to go for it now with a lot of items. They can do it as well. They're aggressively positioned up on the high ground. They're not going just yet, but Kambu is fishing for a hook. Of course, he's got eggs, so he's got one every 12 seconds. Lamb lurking in the front lines. And when do you go if your first departure? You need a clump so you can hit a multiple here. Ice path, coil, silence. You need to hit everyone, and you need to do it quickly because the tier three is about to drop. Lua working away on this. Could be the end for first departure in game one of this best of three. It's not looking good for them now. They got to fight at some point. You just have to take a risk. You have to take a stand. The silence comes now. They're grouped. They're clustered. But will it be enough? In comes Prophet. Where's that coil? Ice path catches. Three, but the Queen of Pain able to BKB. Juggernaut able to spin and dodge away from the Ice Path. Now man's up looking for an Omni Slash. He'll unleash it now. Catches Hana, bashing him time after time again. Kills him off, and on the back lines, it's Miracle. Hunting the supports. Find Sag. Profit dies and buys back. Puck is already on the sidelines. They're going to take the racks, it looks like. Not much Miracle can do about this. He actually lives. Almost goes down. Escapes with about 5 HP. Clockwork hunting him. Kabu throws out a hook. Doesn't even care about the gem on the ground because they take in two lanes of Ra Rax Merlini and Rattlesnake, that constricting style, it's paying off. Game one, all but in the books. Yeah, I mean, this this is just too much of a deficit to come back from. And sure, Skyrath Mage keeps dying, and he doesn't have any, that many items, but the damage has been done. Him picking up that early first split on Puck just really sealed the deal for that lane and just forced him into a really late blink, and he just dies to all this Orchid. I think the Orchid came out around the same time that Puck got his blink, and he just really can't survive once he gets silenced, and... Uh, I think the Skyrath support pick played out very well to Rattlesnake, and this is where the 9 score on the drafting hexagon really comes in. And <laughs> 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 I, I, I feel it was a bit more of an outplayed, to be honest. I mean I, I mean, I definitely agree with you that it's a strong draft, and if you want to deal with the split push, you want these heroes, but I mean, let's give credit where credit's due to what you started with, which is Rattlesnake supports. I just feel this, the movement was superior from them, more efficient and decisive with their time, and Armageddon just... They couldn't do much. After those first few ganks failed, they had four heroes parked bottom for a good five minutes. Yeah, they got the tier nice. one, but they invested a lot to do it. And frankly, Naga Siren just, it, it's a hero that can bring a decent amount, but I don't feel it's really the best one position carry. It's much, it's much stronger. It's kind of your second source of damage. That's why we saw at the International too. Teams would always pick the Naga with a hero like the Morphling, and Morphling would be the one position, even if he started solo mid. Eventually, he's the one who dishes out the damage late. First departure, just falling apart here in game one. It looks like it's coming to an end soon. They're lacking the damage. I don't think they can stop this push. Yep, Aegis expires in about one minute's time. And I feel like this Naga Siren's play would be just better suited to AM, but AM was banned out. I think AM would just be fantastic for the team. He just owns Skyrath Mage and Darkseer with their very large mana pools. And again, Naga Siren, not the best late game carries. He's forced to go a lot of defensive items just because of the massive amount of farm on the side of Rattlesnake. So it looks like this uh, T3 push will be finally happening. Yeah, they'll just wait for the push to come. Middle lane is pushing in. It's already past the river soon. First departure, we'll have to worry about those side lanes. There's your macro pyre just for the creeps. That's their biggest source of damage, but forced to use it. There's your Kabu hook, catches out Palazzo. Now he's trapped in the cogs. He goes Scepter's butt. Man up from Icy, who's got, oh, by the way, a Shiva's as well as your Juggernaut ultimate. And Hanai of Scotty, why the hell not? Rattlesnake is just mowing through these squishy backline heroes on first departure. Kabu, another hook, two heroes caught, no cogs, and he'll deploy them now. Now he decides to back off, he'll do it. Control digression, Rattlesnake not overextending, and with the healing ward, the push doesn't stop. They'll be back to full HP. Who needs the fountain? Who needs any sort of heals aside from mech? They are going for the juggler, and game one is in the books, all but officially now. First departure, gonna be dropping 0-1 in their first match here. Yeah, I think control aggression is definitely Rattlesnake's strength, and we saw them execute most of these ganks in the laning phase, just 
very well and their synergy and teamwork seems to be very spot on what we would expect from one of the top tier Chinese teams. Well, first departure, the one concern we had for this team coming in was maybe a little bit predictable in their style. Everyone knows they love to split push. They go for a pretty classic first departure draft here. Minus, like you mentioned, I think the Anti-Mage would have been a little bit stronger as a pick. Much better against heroes like Darkseer and Clockwork, especially early on. But even Queen of Pain. But Rattlesnake, smart bands, superior draft. And then I think even more importantly, just better execution. They're going to take game one. They will be 1-0 in the match, but it is a best of three. First departure. If you're in their position, this is where you kind of got to reset and come up with something different. Yep, and again, a little bit uh, just too predictable. Um, Naga Sound just really requires a lot of babysitting. That doesn't free up the support to roam and just help out the Fairy Dragon in the middle. Or, sorry, Puck in the middle. Who got, FD. Who got to, it's FD. Yep, FD. And Furion was just forced to go to the jungle. So, again, from the very get-go, as soon as the lane freeze happens, they're forced into this passive position, and they're forced to really babysit and coddle the Naga Siren, and that just really sets the tone for the rest of the game. Darkseer just free to do whatever he wants. Queen of Pain with their really, really orchids, just really crushing first departure from 10 minutes onwards. Game one of this best of three, our first match for the International 3 East Qualifiers in the books. First departure, they dropped the match. I don't feel they paid, played badly, Ben, to be honest. I think first departure just got outplayed. Rattlesnake is looking strong. They're looking scary. Yeah, I think, I, I think again, really strong drafting, strong execution by Rattlesnake there. And, I mean, I think they just won all three lanes. Jug got first blood in middle for, uh, on top lane. Uh, Furion got pushed to the jungle from the very, very get-go, and Clockwork was still managed, managed to uh, find some farm on bottom and XP and escape with minimal deaths. So I think, I mean, they just won early game, mid game, late game. It was a slow game. We talked it to death. Let's throw it over to the analyst desk, see what Gods and Lumi, our two Davids, hopefully looking pretty now. What do you guys think? Thanks, LD. Thanks, Merlin. Uh, fantastic game. One we had coming out from Team Rattlesnake. They look strong. They look convincing. To me, a lot goes back to the start, the laning stage for them. They had this dual lane at top against no one. They went for a very greedy lamp. They had three laning heroes, the jungle darks here, as well as a fairly greedy support hero in the Skyrath Mage. And first departure just sent no one top. They didn't punish in any way. And it hurt them in the long run. Yeah, LD was talking about that, how the supports are a lot more effective in terms of getting levels, roaming. For me, it was actually even earlier than that. You gave... Rising Star? Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake <laughs> had 9 on the draft. <laughs> wah, and, and it wah, really showed wah. through the 9 on the draft, right? On one yeah. side, you have Nature's Prophet, you have Naga Siren. Heroes are great late game, but until you pick up that early Midas, until you pick up like Diffuso Blade or whatever he needs, he doesn't do anything till that mid game. On the other side, you have Clockwork, you have Juggernaut, you have Queen of Pain. All of these heroes, without any items, could be a big. Uh, effect in the mid game early game and that's exactly what happened so yeah. queen of pain had something like a 14 minute orchid and yep. then you combine that with a dark sea with like a 10 11 minute mech and this was a jungle dark sea yep. this isn't your like your off lane or 1v1 lane dark sea they had their clockwork in the off lane who was getting some levels who was getting some experience as well as some gold and then you have your safe lane farming juggernaut so rattlesnake in some ways were just winning three lanes plus the jungle short clock not winning his lane at bottom naga siren got farm but it wasn't. It didn't justify the cost. Not, Nature's profit on the other side was jungling, but Nature's profit versus Darkseer in the jungle just doesn't compare. Yeah, to me though, I think FD played okay. Like against a really early Orgit, a really early Mech. Darkseer had Mech way before the enemy team for at least five, six minutes. Most teams would just collapse without having a Mech for a long time. They played that game till 40 minutes in. I mean, it was three Raxes down, but I felt like they were able to hold on. They didn't make too many mistakes. Miracle got caught out once or twice. But that is somewhat to be expected from a team that doesn't have nearly as much experience in the, under the big lights. So let's see if the, the rust is gone, if you will, if they're going to be a little bit more confident in game two, because they need to step it up. Yeah. Where, where do they change game two? Maybe having a stronger draft. Uh, they like Profit as a hero, but they can't have too weak of a lane. Um, the Chinese are just too strong in terms of roaming their support. They're too effective. They got, what, two early towers? Uh, three early towers, I think, when... Uh, FD got one. You, you can't yeah. really give away too much, especially to a team that have such strong early mid-game heroes. I think a lot of the problems go back to uh, Rattlesnake have done their homework. They knew that First Departure loved to pick up these strong carries for Miracle, and they knew that almost guaranteed they could run this, this greedy jungle darks here, the dual lane again in the safe lane, because they weren't worried about First Departure going with an offensive trial lane. They know they wanted to protect Miracle, protect Miracle's farm, so they said, okay, We've got this, no problem at all. Let's just go greedy, have a dual lane, have a jungler, and fa out farm them. Let Miracle farm because we've got more heroes farming. And in the end, it punished them for game two. I think the big thing is first departure either need to take a risk going for an offensive trial lane 
or they need to get an off laner who can just do a bit better than the Nature's Prophet did, contest the mid lane and have a really strong trail which completely zones out the off lane here of the Clockwork. In that case, it just didn't seem to happen. Yeah, you gotta also be careful about individual mistakes. Puck giving a kill to Juggernaut in the mid lane, that, that can't happen. Yeah. That really can't happen. So. I agree. We'll see what first departure are going to do in game number two. That concludes game number one. Rattlesnake taking a 1-0 lead. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be live with game two.